And how was the farm show? It was good, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Good to be back in person? It, it is good be, to be back in person. Yeah. There, the uh, number of attendees, you know, that level seemed yeah. to be down a little bit, but mm-hmm. still there was a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah. And but you, but you had some space to to move around. Yeah. yeah. I know they did some special things to try to open up more space in case crowds were what they yes. normally were. Yeah, exhibits were were uh, you know some of the hallways, just some of the those areas of heavy movement. Yeah. They had backed off, you know, and moved some of the exhibits around so that it was easier to spread out and move around a bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. But it was good. good. And the weather's still going to be good tomorrow if people want to yes. make that last trip out. That's right. Yeah. Yep, today and tomorrow. And All right. Then that one will be put in the books. As we begin next week, though, maybe the weather's not going <laughs> to be the best in the world. They're expecting anywhere from 6 to 10 inches of snow from Sunday to Monday. Help us get our outsides ready there, Bob. Yeah. What are some of the it, things that we need to do? Well, hopefully we have that d- done already, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did that earlier. But, no, we didn't. But we, yeah. <laughs> We let it go. We got through. Um, now, yeah, especially when, and we don't know whether it's going to be a heavy wet snow or, you know, cold dry snow. Um, so that heavy wet stuff is what does the most damage. So just having shrubs and things that are susceptible to that, uh, especially a lot of multi-stem shrubs. Uh, for Scythia would be example. More spin Lilac, yeah. Um, nine bark. There's another one that you have multiple stems. Mm-hmm. And then you could even go into the blackberries, the black raspberries, the yeah. red raspberries. Yeah. Um, those plants all, depending on the size and diameter of those canes, um, can be more susceptible or less. Of course, the bigger they are, the stronger they are, the mm-hmm. thicker they are. Um, they can hold up to a lot of that. Yeah. Um, the smaller stuff tends to be more susceptible to bowing over, um, laying down. So just tying those up loosely, Mm -hmm. you know, just enough to hold them. We don't want to zip them up, you know, really. Yeah. We don't want to bail them. Um, And especially, now it's warmer today. Mm -hmm. So today might be a good day to to do that. Okay. Because they're a little more limber. Um, When we get it into those teens, then things stiffen up a bit, yeah. and it's a little harder. You can snap things off and not even know it yeah. um, or cause some damage there. So just tying those up will we'll do a lot yeah. to help minimize any potential damage that might occur. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that uh, you have been uh, always an advocate of uh, plastic sheeting or burlap sheeting around your shrubs that are roadside because of the yeah. salt that might get sprayed yeah, on just them. Having a, yeah, just having a barrier. Yeah. And, and I don't like to put plastic wrap plastic or right, right around right, just touching the plant. Sort of fence um, So, yeah, having a fence there uh, just to help shield the plant yeah. um, from some of that spray. It may not 100% prevent it, but it can lessen it enough just to prevent a lot of damage. Now, with a heavy snow like we're supposed to get, it's going to be one of those heavy, wet things, I think. Um, that plow truck might put a <laughs> great, great big load of snow on top of a shrub and, and really... Uh, cause it some problems and 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 bang it up pretty good. Uh, do we need to clean that off of there uh, in order to save that, or or just yeah, let it do its thing? Yeah. Again, having a little bit of a barrier there that can help shield some of the blow of that mm-hmm. um, snow flying on there or building up over top of that plant. Uh, hopefully, things are far enough away that we don't have to worry about you know getting uh, five feet of snow over top of it. Uh, but sometimes that happens anyways. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Be, like just, at my house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just being able to, of course, having plants in that that vicinity that are able to withstand that mm-hmm. to begin with is, is probably the best uh, best medicine there. But but when we don't, then, yeah, just having a little bit of a barrier or even having a little bit of a, mm-hmm. a structure over top uh, that can help soften that blow. But if it does get hammered and there's a yeah. ton of snow on right. top of it, what do I do? Do I right. leave it there? Well, sometimes you don't have a choice. Uh, it can be too much. Or if you can, yeah, mm-hmm. lift that off or lift enough off. It doesn't have to be completely, but just lift enough of that off or move enough off that it doesn't smash the plant. Yeah. That's you know really what we're trying to prevent there. Yeah, yeah. I have a row of uh, three 
uh, of uh, three shrubs uh, mm. that are solid shrubs, uh, but they they form one giant okay. long hedge type shrub. But there are about oh five to six feet across the top of them, right beside the patio roof, and they end mm. up getting a <laughs> load of snow on them, and they get bent down to the ground. And and last year, uh, right after the big snowstorm that came. Uh, we got ice on top of that, so I had that crust on right. top of snow, and it was just killing it. Uh, so I took them off there. But there were times uh, that uh, that I I shaved off a a branch uh, or or I damaged it in some way, just trying to get it off there, trying to save the overall plant. When those things get so low to the ground after they've been <laughs> they've been yeah. they've been flooded with snow. Uh, getting them back up through the course of it could take over a year before they recover. From oh that. yeah, if they do. Yes, sometimes when those get forced down or pressed down like that, they never do regain their natural natural shape or form. Um, so, in other words, don't do that. Don't give them <laughs> that opportunity. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't let them be down there long. I mean, they can take that for a little bit, but days of that and weeks of that, yeah. they'll just stay in that new position and they will not revert back to where they were originally. So, and, with, and some of the evergreens. You know, like yeah. that. Some of the um, some of the upright junipers, um, arborvitae aren't so bad. They're they can handle a lot of that. But some of the junipers can have some longer uh, branches inside the plant that can get splayed out more easily. So, yeah. you know, even again, anything that can be just lightly wrapped up that yeah. can really solve a lot of that. And sometimes plants are open enough. Mm -hmm. That they'll let that snow go down through, sift down through, and actually, yes, it'll sift down through, and then it'll build up. But that's a whole different. If we can let it do that, then the plant will still maintain its shape and form and be okay in there. You look at the weather that is coming after the big snow. So, so we get say that six to ten that AccuWeather is calling for uh, from Sunday into Monday, uh, and then Monday night they say we're going to get down to uh, 21 degrees with a snow shower or two, less than an inch. Uh, and then after that, Tuesday, 30 degrees with an overnight low of 24. Wednesday, 39 with an overnight low of 17. Thursday, 27, down to 9. Mm. Uh, and next weekend, it's going to be a, a pretty cold weekend as well. So that's what's coming after the storm. Uh, so it doesn't look like there's going to be any freezing rain coming on top of it. So we won't no. get that crustiness. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's going to be sloppy. Yep. And, but, and then again, and we've talked before about that snow being an insulator. That can also having that snow around when we do get down into those mm -hmm. single digits yeah. uh, can be very helpful and uh, provide that insulation layer there to protect plants uh, when we get these more extreme temperature conditions. Now, a question having to do with ornamental grasses mm. um, this year. I didn't mow. I, I I kept my ornamental grass. It's yeah. uh, it's about three feet tall, two and a half to three feet tall, and uh, I just let it die off. Um, so I didn't mow it back in the fall. Um, that should not be affected by the snow or anything no. like that. I can just let it go. Yes, uh, you can let it in go. In the spring, I'll, I'll mow that off. Right? Yeah, you can finish it off in the spring. And a lot of times that'll die. Those tops all die back. Yeah. So really, they're over the winter months, we can let that there as ornamental interest, um, just something you mm -hmm. know swaying in the wind uh, during the winter months, um, and a little bit of color. Uh, in the landscape as well, and then the seed heads on top. And a lot of the – some varieties are much more uh, prolific in their their seed heads that are on there, or they're more yeah. visible um, during the winter months, and some are more petite and, and not as noticeable. But uh, still, that can provide some winter interest. And um, But then sometimes you'll just – yeah, you can cut them off in the fall once that dies back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of these – some of those snow and things like that can also smash that down yeah. um, and, and knock them off because it is, it off yeah, it's industry. still yeah. dead. And then you can tidy it up in the spring just to have it nice about the time and I'm evenly doing the cut. Yeah, about the time you're doing the grapes, you can clean that up. Because usually by that time, they're starting to, those tops are starting to break off anyhow, and they'll mm. blow around in those March winds and collect other places. Oh. March, yeah. March. We we don't like March until it gets here. Um, <laughs> all right. So so those are some of the snow issues that we're dealing with. Uh, in, in terms of other things, I just wanted to you to take note of this. I was looking at the Friends of the Parks programs. Mm. They have some really good things coming up. 
Uh, but on the on the cover of the Friends of the Parks, um, I had no idea Indiana County has polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a nice picture of yeah. a polar bear there. Uh, well, maybe we don't have them, but they're going. We could learn about them. There's a Roman, that... Roman blue spruce there. No, it, it is a program having to do with polar bears. But I just got a kick out of it. Maybe, I, maybe they're moving <laughs> south. Right? I was wondering if that was part of uh, our uh, one of Penn State Extension's big programs. Um, but okay, so so that being the case, there's also a picture of a tick, mm. uh, and I wanted to ask about ticks in the winter time and. Uh, uh, when they become a threat to us again, when they get that nymph stage in the spring, when are we going to have to be concerned again about ticks? Well, we could be concerned about them now if we're out, you know, walking around. Yeah, um, they're still because they're there's still nothing, there? there's no cover. Yeah, they're still there. Those those mm-hmm. nymphs are still there. So having that snow cover uh, can actually put them down in and and be less of an issue because mm-hmm. they're hanging on stems down there or the, or the down on the ground. So uh, when the ground's bare, um, it's easier for them to move around. When we have snow cover on the ground, then less easy for that to happen. Okay. All right. So I, I stood, should still be concerned about ticks at this time. Yes. Yeah, I guess always. What, what did what did uh, Tim Allen say on Last Man Standing? <laughs> he said, uh, uh, it, it, because Ed Alzante was saying that it was uh, the most dangerous, de- deadly creature in the world. And he said, well, I, I don't know how deadly a creature it is when the solution to defeating it is to just tuck your pants into your socks. But <laughs> 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 but they are very dangerous. And, and yes, they, they can and they be. do great harm, harm to humans like us. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks so much for coming in to visit with us today. You're welcome. It was a rush today, wasn't it? It was for some reason. I don't know why. (laughs) It's the voice of Indiana County WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160.